Well, as you can see, I've successfully removed the carburettor here and I'm just going to take a few photos actually to help me when I come to reassemble it later on. Welcome to another Arwen's Meanderings. In this video, I attempt to strip and clean the carburettor from my Tohatsu 4 stroke 3.5 horsepower outboard. It's the first time I've ever worked on an outboard engine, so I'm feeling my way. I'm just cleaning off some oily deposits around the air intake area here and before I take off this bottom float bowl, although I think some people actually call it a float chamber. You can see that I'm working on a cheapy baking tray here just in case I drop anything or something unexpected pops out. To be truthfully honest, I'm not really sure whether or even if the carb has ever been serviced before. My dealer says it's been done, but having already found out that he has misled me about changing the gear lube, um, I'm not so sure now. Um, I've got to say he's shaken my confidence in him a little bit, to be honest. Today I'm just aiming to clean the main jet and nozzle and um, the slow air jet. Um, this diagram here shows the parts that I'm cleaning in red. Now, I'm a little bit unsure about this next stage. I've got to be honest, some websites say remove the float and the float needle, and others say don't. I'm going to gingerly remove it, and I'm hoping I'm doing the right thing here. I'm just trying to move the main jet screw here, and I have to say it is solid. It's absolutely not solid. That is not moving a millimetre. In fact, I'm actually in danger of stripping the screwdriver slot. Um, this is soft brass, and I can already see it's beginning to go. I'm spraying carb cleaner in the forlorn hope that it'll loosen this jet. I did read somewhere that you should put the carb in a vise and then tap the screwdriver into the slot. But to be quite frankly honest, that's just, I'm just not brave enough to do that. Okay, I'm coming up with a plan B and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully reassemble this float and, and put back on the float bowl and then I'll take it down to the garage and remove the bowl again and then I'm going to leave the jets to soak overnight in carb cleaner and see if that loosens them up in the morning. Well, good morning, and as you can see, an overnight soaking has done absolutely nothing. Those jets have not shifted one inch. I've refrained from poking wire into little holes, and I've reassembled and put the float chamber bowl back on. Um, it's now time to reassemble it. It's not quite the result I was hoping for. I am sorry. Okay, I've got the manifold sealed in, and I'm just refitting the carb here. I've got to tilt this now 90 degrees. Uh, to um, hook it in onto the um, throttle wire that you can see here. Then I'm, I'm just tucking these hoses back down below and I mustn't forget to push these through their respective holes in the engine compartment base after I've bolted the carb in place. I'm glad I took all these photographs um, when I took it out because um, it's helping me get things back in the right position. So it's a good tip, take plenty of photos. I've spent a lot of time worrying about whether I've done the right thing trying to service my own outboard. Maybe I should have just left it to a professional service engineer. By doing it myself, I'm feeling I'm actually cheating him out of a livelihood. 
and, and maybe this is one of those occasions when 120 odd quid is actually worth paying. It's um, a tad fiddly here, I'm just trying to hold the manifold gaskets and the carb and the air intake unit together and trying to insert bolts and it's all fingers and thumbs. I clearly didn't inherit Dad's engineering genes. If you're watching Dad, I'm really sorry. Okay, everything's assembled by the choke cable and the fuel lines, so I'm just hand tightening up the bolts now. And, um, at least I've managed to reassemble it all in the correct order. That's a bonus. Ah, oh, bog it, I forgot the drain hoses. Oh, oh, right, that's fiddly. I can't get my hands in there, it's too tight to push them through the holes. Oh, rats, I should have thought about this more carefully. Oh, I'm gonna have to take the old carb out again. Rats! Okay, here's a really big tip. Put the pipes through the holes in the base of the compartment before you actually bolt the carb back in place. Uh, God, God had given me a brain. <sighs> so frustrating. Uh, I guess sometimes making mistakes is good learning, just so long as I don't do the same mistake again next time. Okay, everything's back in. One last turn of the wrench and we're practically done. Just the choke cable and fuel lines to sort on top. Bugger. Oh, bugger. I apologise for my profanity, but bugger indeed. One turn too many. Never over tighten a bolt going into a blind hole. Lesson learnt. I'm just hoping that that's sheared off proud so I can get some pliers on it. I should have been so lucky. Oh, God, that's going to have to be drilled out. <sighs> God, sometimes I'm so stupid. Well, some lessons in life are painfully learnt. The inlet manifold came out, the throttle assembly had to be removed, and my thanks goes to Paul down in Cornwall for drilling out the stub and inserting a helicoil for me. There are inadequate words to describe my elation a week later when after reinstalling the manifold and the carburettor, the engine exploded into life on the second pull. I was so not looking forward to having to go begging to her indoors for a new outboard engine. Why not join me for another Arwen's Meanderings by clicking subscribe, visiting my channel and blog, and downloading a playlist or two. Fair winds to you all. See you all out on the water after lockdown. Take care now, stay safe.